hey, um, I guess I'm gonna do a new part of my top 50 movies of all time. So get excited, cause I think I already did 50 through 17, which means right now I have to go on to do number 16, which is a classic, classic film called Citizen Kane, of course, uh, by Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater, also starring, starring Orson Welles, and it's a very, very soundlessly constructed film, and the cinematography is brilliant, it looks amazing, and it's like very inventive ways of storytelling, and it's a ver very, very entertaining movie. And number 15 is a movie I haven't really seen on anyone's, like, I don't think I've ever seen it on, a, like, a top list, but it's a movie that I really personally enjoy a lot. And it's a movie called, um, it's a Hal Ashby movie from 1971 called Harold and Maude. And I, I don't know why, I don't know, I kind of feel weird for liking this movie as much as I do. It's just so funny and so, such, like, a cute movie. And I've seen it multiple times, like maybe like I've seen it like seven times or something, and it it still is just as entertaining as the first time I watched it. It's just a re it's a really really funny movie. It's not very talk talked about very often. Yeah, and um, Ruth Gordon is amazing, by the way, and uh, most famous for Rosemary's Baby, which she won the Oscar for for Best Supporting Actress. Number fourteen is uh, Japanese animated film called Spirited Away, which is unanimously loved by everyone, and um, the way the, the whole alternate alternate world with all its different rules, and, and it's just wonderfully crafted, and it's, it's perfect in every, it's very perfect, like when I get, when I'm getting towards like the end here, a lot of these movies I just feel are just flawless. And I wouldn't really change anything about them. And I think that like it's this is such a wonderfully balanced story. The way it the way it flows is really, really, really amazing. Um, number thirteen is another epic by the one and only Paul Thomas Anderson. It's Magnolia from nineteen ninety nine. And that this is a very, very long movie, but it really is like so fast paced the whole thing that you really don't feel it being long at all it's it feels like maybe two hours two hours ish uh, that's what I'd say two hours and that's really really an admirable trait for a movie and every performance I really like even though like sometimes like some of the things that Julianne Moore does you're looking at it and you're trying to think if you, do I like what she's doing or do I not like what she's doing? And I think I do like what she's doing. I really like Julianne Moore pretty much in everything, anyway. Um, 12 is... Talking of good performances, number 12 is uh, Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, which um, features one of my favorite performances of all time by Gloria Swanson, who plays Norma Desmond, of course, one of the most iconic screen characters ever, who has some of the best lines ever, because it's such a great screenplay, it's just, that movie is another one which I just think is perfect, and it, it's about the, I really like, it's about many different things, really, but the main focus, I think, is about the silent film stars who didn't make it to talking film sto stars, which is very interesting, because that kind of defines Gloria Swanson and the character that she's playing, which is very cool. And number 11 is one of the best science fiction films ever. One of them. Uh, it's Ridley Scott's Blade Runner from 1982 with Harrison Ford, which is a wonderful, wonderful movie. It's very, very complex. It's not like a very, like, it's not a very shallow science fiction film, that, but it has a lot going on there. And it's like a new war set in the future, with and they have... It's, and um, the way it talks about life and death, and what it really means to be living, is very interesting. Uh, number ten is my favorite animated film 
of all time, which, which is Wally, which is another amazing science fiction film. Um, and that is just the way the story is told, with how the first thirty to forty minutes is all silent, and you could still know what's going on, because the ma a really admirable quality about a movie is that for its ability to tell a story visually completely, which is something I actually noticed about the 400 blows, that if I did not have the subtitles on in that movie, I'd be able to watch it and know what's going on somewhat without hearing dialogue, which is amazing. That I don't, there's not many movies that you can really know exactly what's going on. And the way it, fl Wally flawlessly perform, like, does this, and it flawlessly does it. Um, number nine is another epic, and that's Gone with the Wind, which is a Blu-ray I showed in my Blu-ray collection video, because it's one of my top ten films of all time, as you now know, and, um, I really just like the performances, that's the main thing for me here. I think that two of the best performances ever are, have to be Vivian Lee and Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind. They're definitely the most iconic performances, but I believe them to be two of the best performances in that I've ever seen, and it's so memorable. Every minute of this four hour, I think it's almost four hours this film is, every minute of it is extremely, like, memorable, and there's so many famous moments for it. It's just you're watching it, and it's like, like, it's like, great, and it really transports you back to the time period, not just with its costumes, but with, but with the whole atmosphere of the film. It's a very, very effective film. Uh, next I have, um, three Stanley Kubrick films that I kind of put into this block here together. 876. Number 8 is The Shining. And number seven is A Clockwork Orange. And number six is 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm just going to talk about these together because I want to talk about Stanley Kubrick a little bit. Um, if you want to talk about perfection as a filmmaker, you have to talk about Stanley Kubrick because he is possibly the most perfect. Like, every single thing it has to be perfect when he makes a movie. And it really shows in everything. And if you think about... Two, if you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey, and you then know that it was made in 1968, you will be completely shocked. It's ridiculously, ridiculously good-looking. A very, very good-looking film for the, its time period. The special effects were all done with camera tricks, which no one ever does anymore. Now, it all has to be CGI, this was done without CGI, and it's amazing, the way it looks. And I love his use of music as well. The way you could use the, the juxtaposition with the rape scene in A Clockwork Orange with um, Singing in the Rain. Or or um, or uh, the great opening theme in The Shining. Or, of course, um, the famous 2001 scene. Or Blue Danube, I think it's called, which they play during like the space montage. It's all very amazing very very good and like like almost his songs almost become that he uses in a cockroach garage in 2000 space odyssey he uses songs from other time like other for that were pre-existing songs and they become synonymous with this movie which is which is how you know that someone's using a song correctly so that's my little thing about stanley kubrick i'll get back to um to you with five through one next time.